This is Here and Now with Ahmed of Palestine, Steve Struggle of, uh, of the Imperial Center. It's not just the United States of America. This is the Imperial Center of the world, Good. which is being chipped away at bit by bit and not so bit by bit in many other instances as well. BRICS, even Palestine has been invited to the BRICS conference. Did you hear about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. That's interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Which is very symbolic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's symbolic, but uh, nevertheless, yeah. And who's applying to BRICS? Who's a member of NATO? <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> Turkey, yeah, I heard that. But uh, I don't know. He's playing uh, the Indian game of uh, India. India playing uh, footsie with the United States and Imperial uh, powers, yet at the same time, she is in uh, with russia and and the bricks so is um ardogan is doing the same story he's playing putsi here and playing putsi there yeah. i don't trust those two powers yet not yet yeah yeah <laughs> erdogan you know he said that he was going to declare war on his on the zionist state Bullshit. at that's, one that's point bold. you know that's bold that's bold yeah. that's the biggest Very bull you know like uh, of all you know like uh, uh, you know he until now, until until as we speak today, the the Turkish port of Jihan is still um, export uh, the pipeline coming from Kazakhstan and from Azerbaijan oil pumping into the into the Zionist uh, entity supporting its war effort. Yeah. Also, yeah. there's lots of Turkish um, uh, private enterprises exporting uh, goods to Israel. So basically, you know, all these speeches uh, Erdogan is making, it's just something in the air, meaningless. Yeah. So far, is you know, he has empty words, nothing really more than empty words. We need really action, not words, because the whole world is talking, but zero action. Yeah. You know, now the issue of sanctions becomes uh, uh, <clears throat> becomes the uh, foremost uh, form, uh, uh, because uh, I believe it was the International Court of Justice recently, which is called for sanctions or is about to call for sanctions on the Zionist state. Because they have not responded to the uh, demand of the International Court of Justice that a report, you know, within a month to end the genocide that's happening in Gaza. They have not done so. So the International Court of Justice has to proceed further now. So they're preparing or have, you know, declared that there should be sanctions imposed upon the Zionist state because it is refusing to, to uh, cease this genocide. In Gaza, even though they're running out of targets, you know, and the number of there's no targets, targets you know, to start with, <laughs> there's no targets to start with, you know, but they're just, you know, making up stuff, you know, like yeah, some course. some individual member of Hamas who's said to be a member of Hamas, but who may not be a member of Hamas, is wiped off the map, you know, together with his entire family and his entire neighborhood. That's right. That's what they're doing, you know. That's right. You know, actually, the Zionists, uh, they're not shy of saying that. He said. They say that if there was a there was a terrorist and he hiding between the people, what should we do? We have to bomb him. It's like this: they're giving themselves the explanation and the justification to kill uh, civilians. They, like from their own words, they are being uh, you know condemned as as terrorists and as uh, criminals. Mm -hmm. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> now, <clears throat> on the other hand, mm -hmm. when you know the uh, the party goers at the uh, Nova Festival, 354 who who died, uh, this they make a big story out of, you know, and they don't even acknowledge, you know, that a, a large, you know, percentage of those uh, 354 at the Nova Festival were killed by the Apache helicopters and by the Zionist tanks. Okay. Actually, there were there were 
lots of reports, even with from the Haaretz, the Israeli Zionist left newspaper, said more than once that Hamas did not know about the Nufet festival that was mm-hmm. taking place at that area. Mm-hmm. So basically, when when uh, the the Hamas commando entered into the the Palestinian land occupied in nineteen fifty five. Mm. by the Zionists, uh, the alarm went off and those people, they had, you know, uh, they were in a stampede. Then the Zionist Apache and tanks start shooting at them, killing those 300 plus uh, uh, ex-Zionist soldiers. They, actually, they are Zionist soldiers. They are soldiers. You yeah, know, they're they at the soldiers. age of being a, the a soldier. No, they are. Time. Actually, it was, it was, like a, a mass graduation mm. after court after uh, after graduation party for those soldiers. Anyway, nevertheless, it was not Hamas; it was the Israelis who killed them, and they accepted the fact. But our politicians they keep repeating the same lie over and over and over and over with no shame whatsoever. Mm. You know, even the Zionists themselves stopped repeating these lies, the people, the, the officials in the West, repeating the same lies. Unreal. Mm. It's just yeah. unreal. Beyond me. Yeah. Yeah. Even the media is still sort of harping. It used to be, you know, the figure, you know, the number of Israelis who died, you know, October the 7th, whether soldiers or civilians, was, you know, touted as 1,400. And then they discovered that they were including, you know, 200 Hamas fighters. So, 200 Hamas fighters, you know, were taken off and it was said to be 1,200. Then they changed it again and said, oh, no, 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 no. It's 1,139. And then they imply, and they keep on implying, you know, that this is just, you know, Israelis, you know, not soldiers, just Israelis, you know, implying that they're all civilians. No, they're which not. Which is not the case. And then <clears throat> they don't report in, in, in the corporate media about the um, how the, so many of the Israelis were Hannibalized. Is the term yes. that I've invented, you know? They yeah, exactly. Feel by what they say from time to time, you know, friendly fire. They say maybe there was some friendly fire, you know, etc. <laughs> friendly, you know? I like that that term, friendly fire. Yeah, uh, yeah, friendly, friendly, deliberate murder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it in it's crazy. Anyway, that's not the the issue at this moment. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that. Uh, those being murdered uh, or killed uh, during uh, the first trade of Hamas into Palestine. Uh, the vast majority, majority were active or off-duty Israeli soldiers, mm. and uh, many of them were murdered by their own tanks and Apache. And mm. that's it. This is this is it's now it's a fact. It's mm-hmm. no more as uh, just uh, a, a, a story. He said mm-hmm. or she said. Even the Zionists admitted that it was us who killed most of these people. Yet yeah. Kamala Harris, Justin Trudeau, uh, Terry Sturmer, they're still repeating the same lies that was mm-hmm. uh, start, uh, that started on October the 7th. It's, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's a real shame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> what's not mentioned as well <laughs> is that I don't know if they're included in the 354, but at the Nova Festival, there was 57 uh, border police who were killed, who were trying to repulse the uh, the uh, offensive. You know, this is a middle military battle that Hamas won. <clears throat> so 57, you know, border police gone, plus 20 security uh, uh security officers at the Nova Festival gone. And they're probably included in the 354 as well. But, you know, what a surprise, you know, for the Hamas, you know, fighters, you know, to come in there, they're on the way to the military base to take care of the military base there. And, you know, and they bump into this, you know, like huge festival with how many, you know, thousands, you know, of uh, participants. And they don't know if they've got guns or not. They just know that they're, you know, soldier age, you know, I even saw a video of one, you know, soldier, woman, <clears throat> the tall woman with a black bra who was dancing. And in the background, you could see the Hamas fighters, you know, uh, 
you know, coming in with their parachute, you know, uh, uh, motor motorized parachutes, <laughs> and it was uh, it was so uh, indicative of the and uh, of the uh, mentality of the Israelis, you know, thinking that they were unbeatable, untouchable, and that they were uh, living in a secure state, <laughs> and the state was protecting them. You know, this is you know like a general sort of you know. Uh, uh, mentality amongst the Israelis that the state is necessary to protect them, you know, from quote unquote the barbarians, you know, <laughs> which is the cradle of civilization, you know, as well. Of course, <laughs> but yeah. you know, can't figure that out. You know, that's you know a bit of a problem there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's 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 uh, uncanny. But the Israelis are cracking up now. The demonstrations are huge. The demand is for, you know, the overthrow of the government. Histadrut, you know, the old Zionist, you know, trade union federation had a general strike, a revolutionary general strike, in effect, you know, calling for the downfall of the government and the end of the war and the return of the hostages. Yeah, but and they were ordered the by the, the labor court to, uh, yeah. to cancel so, the strike because this is not a, a work-related strike. It's a political strike. Yeah, so, so they back all up. of a sudden, yeah, <laughs> yeah, workers are not supposed to think about politics, you know. Exactly, like, they're supposed to just work. That's, that's it. it, you know, just be a slave. That's it. That's all. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know what? This is still uh, the fact that a, a good bulk of majority of Zionists still supports and back the Zionist government. Uh, I would say uh, there's 50-50%, and the other 50% are fragmented Zionist uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they want a stop, a total stop of the war, have, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, exchange uh, a deal to exchange prisoners and stop the war. Others, they want to have a lull in the fighting, get our get their uh, so-called hostages back, and then continue the war. So mm -hmm. basically, a good majority of the Zionists still supports uh, Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. uh, that have us to take, that have to take in consideration what they are uh, thinking of what's going on in the North. The vast majority of the Israelis, they want a war against Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Netanyahu is still in a in a very comfortable uh, you know ground, and still has a lead, and he has a solid uh, coalition and solid backing by at least minimum forty percent or fifty percent of the Zionist colonists in Palestine. So mm -hmm. I don't think there will be any deal anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I think this is something in the past now. I believe that. Israel only need to uh, lose somehow a uh, big time, somehow a big operation in in Gaza or around Gaza or from the north. This is the only way make Israel to wake up from its drunkenness mm -hmm. of genocide. That's, mm -hmm. that's my assessment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, but uh, I think we should note as well that Israel is afraid to go into Lebanon. And they want, you know, American backing to go into Lebanon, and they're not getting it. Even though, you know, they've got a certain backup in case they fail completely, you know, with uh, two aircraft carrier groups, you know, in the Mediterranean there. Another another one in the uh, Persian Gulf, in case uh, they want to, to change their mind and attack Iran. It's a very uh, dangerous moment now. <laughs> yeah. But um, I was wondering, Steve, you know, uh, <clears throat> what's happening with the student protest movement in the United States? I know. Okay, well, uh, I have an update for you about that. Okay. Currently, um, there is a conference occurring right now in Berkeley, California. Um, they're trying, they're reorganizing the movement uh, regionally around demands that people who are engaged in the struggle to liberate uh, Palestine, they are meeting now. So it seems that what I understand is that um, 
students are meeting and they are developing new strategies and they'll be rolling out the new the, the new tactics shortly. Um, that, that's that's there have been there were I mentioned last week there have been arrests at Columbia and other comp campuses. Um, so we're, it seems as though the campuses may not be the same tactics as encampments as last year because many students, many many schools have either banned them or have let students know if say, you do encampments, you will be arrested and possibly suspended from school. There were, as I mentioned, there were conferences this summer that we did not know about um probably because we're not on the campuses but there were campuses there were there were conferences held this summer to develop new tactics and strategies so as the year as the academic year rolls out we'll have to see what occurs i i i could not be at that meeting today um but i i do know that meetings are occurring and people are coming together um to to create new ways of uh supporting Palestine and the struggle for its liberation. Um, we had the murder of a of a Turkish American activist by Israel uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, the State Department is covering it up, uh, even though they are U.S. citizens. They were murdered uh, by a member of the Israeli army. So there's been some there's been some focus on that. That's all I can report right now. Uh, well, yeah, her name is uh, Anwayer, I think is the pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. Of her name is Aisha. She's an American uh, Turkish. She was targeted by an Israeli sniper right. on on the land uh, 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 was supposed to be to, to turn to be a, a Zionist colony on the West Bank, on occupied West Bank. She was hit directly behind the ear, into the head. She instant. She died instantly. Um, According to the coroner, the Palestinian coroner and the Turkish coroner, uh, believe that was a, a, a bullet directly from uh, 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 a professional sniper that uh, murdered her. On the other hand, uh, Joe Biden, he said she died, uh, unfortunately, in an in, 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 in indirect bullet that bounced on her. So it was unfortunate in incidents. That's it. This is what the American administration uh, threw, threw under the bus. Uh, and yet another American victim of Israelis like Rachel Corey, who, she was crushed yes. by D9 uh, uh, bulldozer in, um, in Gaza uh, 20 years ago. So basically, if you're supporting, if you're an American and supporting the Palestinian, and you're being murdered by the Israelis, you have blue blood. You you don't count. However, mm -hmm. if you are an Israeli soldier and you are murdering Palestinians, and you get killed, uh, hell breaks loose on the Palestinian resistance. How dare you killing an American like what happened? To that Israeli soldier who was killed by his own mm. in Rafah. His name is Hirsch Goldberg. Mm. And uh, Biden and all his uh, White House staff were so upset and crying the blues and called the family and they will make Hamas or Hamas, as they say, Hamas uh, leadership pay for this murder. So you could tell the difference between those people who has red blood, uh, Zionists, and blue blood the, who are supporting the Palestinians. That's mm. if this is not racism at its finest form. What else can we call it? Mm. Yeah, normalized. They, it's for them. It's normal, you know, to be racist. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it is. Um, it's the United general. States is built on racism and still sustained by the racism on all mm. levels against all uh, ethnicities, especially those ethnicities that against the system, against the imperial system. Yes. And, and so many of the Zionist, uh, Zionist leaders are, <clears throat> are uh, assimilated into the Western, you know, ethic of racism. 
Yep. And they just continue on that manner, you know, like, uh -huh. uh, you know, like <laughs> Netanyahu is an American, you know, like he's just an American, you know, who's who's acting on behalf of the uh, <clears throat> of the U.S. Imperial uh, uh, Center yeah, and uh, ready and waiting, you know, to do the bidding of the United States of America, you know, if uh, Suez Canal is taken over again by Egypt or uh uh, any other sort of uh, revolutionary movement, you know, arises, you know, and the whole you know, Western uh, Asia, you know, Arab world is ready for revolution. You know, it's ripe for revolution. So, you know, Israel is, this Israel, the so-called Israel, is the guarantee, you know, that uh, the Arab countries will not go socialist. And uh, that's, you know, the principal reason, I think, the geopolitical reason why uh, the Zionists are getting so much support. I mean, uh, not as much as, you know, the Ukrainians are getting, you know, to fight and invade Russia now, but still, you know, like uh, it's it's the um, it's the only thing that's holding back, you know, the world revolution in, in the Arab countries is the Zionist state. And the term <clears throat> Israel, I would note, is not the name of a state, it is the name of a people. It was the name of the people that was ascribed to Jacob when he, his 12 sons and the 12 tribes that were <clears throat> propagated after Jacob assumed the name of Israel as the name of a people, uh, and they did not have a state. It is also notable that <clears throat> when the Jewish people were formed under Moses, there was no king, there was no state. There was an annual general constituent assembly of the people 35 times. That's noted, and this is detailed in the Torah account, that there were these general assemblies, you know, that, that governed the uh, people of that time. Now, along comes, you know, the period in which Samuel, the prophet, you know, warned the people against, you know, having a king. He said, you don't want to have a king, because if you have a king, then you're going to have taxes and you're going to have war. And the purpose of the taxes is to wage war. And yet the people still wanted a king. So the prophet Samuel did a trick on them. And he chose the son of a worker who was nearby, just like that, arbitrarily. That was Saul. But Saul got carried away. And so they ended up, you know, with a kingdom and a state. And then they had all the problems. <clears throat> and because of the taxation, the northern uh, Sumerians split from the Judeans, and they uh, set up their own country without a, without a state, without a, without a king. And the Sumerians are still living there peacefully with the Palestinians as Palestinians, right next to the Palestinians. In fact, they provide the only alcohol permit uh, outlet for the Palestinians who, when they do want to, to buy any alcohol up there on Mount Gerizim, there's a store that operates freely, you know. And if people want, you know, it's a matter of choice. You know, it's not repressive, you know. Islam is not repressive like it's made out to be. And uh, and so the lesson to be learned, you know, from, <clears throat> from this history <clears throat> is that a state is not necessary to be a people. Uh, people can live together with another people in, <clears throat> in that given territory <clears throat> if they recognize the principle of reciprocity, that each people has the same rights to self-determination that any other people have. And yet the Zionists think that they, they're the only ones who have a right to self-determination. And they don't even have that right, you know, because they don't have a mandate from the Jewish people to speak on behalf of the Jewish people. They don't have a the mandate from the Palestinian to allow them in, in the Palestinian. Of course not. Yeah. Of course They never not. sort of, you know, asked for permission to come no. in there they came and as set up Ptolemy. a homeland. No, they came in there under the Balfour Declaration, you know, which decided for the Palestinians that there was going to be a Jewish homeland in Palestine. But even then, the Balfour Declaration doesn't talk about a state. Even then, the Balfour Declaration didn't talk about you know, uh, any expulsion of the indigenous, you know, inhabitants. No, it was Palestine that was mentioned and only Palestine that was mentioned in the Balfour Declaration. <laughs> and yet they ignore this, you know. It's so you pathetic, see, you know, you intellectually, see, uh, a poverty of intellectualism, to say the least. You see, the, the stories uh, that the, the Bible had to say, maybe or maybe not happened or not happened, that's, that's a history, something... So far, the actual archaeology and, and historian did not prove. Doesn't mean anything. Anyway, what happens is after uh, the war, the Second World War, 1945, 
put everything everything in the history to to arrest. Basically, it created a so called something called international law and international humanitarian law. But is that all people has to abide with it. Basically, when they created the Zionist state on the land of Palestinian people, they broke the law. Therefore, we have to abide the law. We cannot go back a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand years ago because at one point God was a real estate agent and gave you the land of Palestine. Okay. So, uh, they have to be some kind of, uh, you know, um, a baseline that inter the entire humanity has to de to uh, adhere to. This baseline was created in 1949 in Geneva. It's called the International Law and International Humanitarian Law. And if we uh, bring the issue of Palestine to that law, to apply the law into the issue of Palestine, the Zionist has zero, zero right to create a state in Palestine. Hmm. Uh, 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 this is how I see things. Uh, hmm. I'm not going to go uh, debunk or agree <laughs> on the story of Saul or Solomon or King David. That's belong to the, the religious history of the Jews and has nothing to do in today's civilized human species, how to deal with each other. Okay, mm -hmm. because if we want to go dig in the history and the stories of, of, the, of the past, uh, then, you know, you could have the Italians claiming Germany because we once were in Germany as Romans and we belong, this is belong to us. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. just a headache. So that's why there was a law called international law, and we have to adhere to it. Very mm -hmm. plain and simple. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you may have noticed <clears throat> that uh, I was uh, educated in the cheder, you know, in Judaism for seven years, in in night school, you know. So <clears throat> I, I have a lot of you know of uh, Judaic, you know, um, uh, history in in my mind. <clears throat> but what uh, I I want to point out is that Judaism does not back up the Zionist narrative when they claim that they were uh, granted, you know, the land of Canaan forever. This is not true. In, in Judaism itself, the Zionists are basically assimilated to Protestantism, which declares this <clears throat> land to be the holy land of the Jewish people. This is not Judaism. This is not to be found in Judaism even. It is Protestant Christianity. And, yeah. you know, they have this theory, you know, that... Very imperialistic. Uh, when they, yeah, very imperialistic as well, you know, with the Crusades. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is, you know, uh, to rationalize their hegemony over the world. Because if they have control over Jerusalem, as General Allenby said, this is the last crusade that he intends to keep control over Jerusalem forever. That's right. Okay, now, but if one, you know, wants to defeat the Zionism with a Judaic uh, reference, one can do so very easily because the first reference to the, the covenant of Abraham, as it's called, is with the descendants of Abraham forever. The first child of Abraham was the son whose name was uh, Ishmael, not Isaac. Yeah. And when the Zionists refer to Isaac, they say the only son of Abraham, only. Where do they get this from? You know, like, it's not from... in Judaism, you know, like, it's totally, you know, like, false, according to Judaism itself, you know? Yes, so, true. incredible, see, incredible set this, of lies that Zionism has been formed. This, as argument, this argument you are presenting, it has to be coming from Jews like you. And all other Jews who are uh, like uh, Natori Karta, the Orthodox Jews who's against Zionism, and they could argue that within the Jewish community to to debunk the the Zionist uh, ideology as Jewish, which is not Jewish, but uh, we as secular progressive people, we have to debunk the Zionist. Imperialist, imperialist entity 
in according to the international law and mm -hmm. international civility and international mm -hmm. norms that emanated after the Second World War. So basically, I will as for uh, for me, I will never argue with the Zionists about Judaism because I'm not a Jewish and I'm not a scholar about uh, Judaism. I'll leave that to you or other good Jews who are anti-Zionist, like Natura Carta. They are doing a very good job mm. of debunking the Zionist uh, mythology, which is a myth, which is, mm. is a big lie. I know what he's talking about. I know what he's yeah. saying. I know what, what you come from and what where Natura Carta coming from, which I fully agree with it. But for me, as a Palestinian, I I, I, I can't argue with that issue. It's not my job to argue if if Judaism says this or say that versus Zionism. Mm. But the problem with Natura Karta is they don't go inside the Jewish community to argue against Zionism. They only hang out with Palestinian demonstrations, which helps the Palestinian demonstrations enormously from the very beginning. And from you know the first instance of October the 7th, they were there. Meanwhile, you know, the secular uh, uh, anti-Zionists, they weren't there. <laughs> you know, like the the organization in Canada called um, um, uh, Independent Jewish Voices, you know, which split off from the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians, which mm -hmm. I had founded with Professor Michael Benazon. They split off, you know, because they're with different mentality. They're assimilationists, you know, but they become, they have to become identified as Jewish in order to stop Zionism. It took them a long time to realize that they had a role to play Absolutely. They were pretending that they weren't Jewish before. No, very they important, decide... it's a very, very important role to play. As yeah. Well. yeah. And yeah, uh, because they're using but... Jew, Jew, Judaism, Jews, Jewish history, Jewish uh, suffering as a pretext to colonize Palestine. Therefore, Jews must step into the, uh, to the fight against Zionism. I, I, I have a friend of mine who is, a, 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 a well, he's a, affiliated in a way or another to Natori Carta. I will try to invite him into our next broadcast if he would like to. Maybe he doesn't want to show his face, which is fine, okay, uh, for different reasons. I'll ask, I'll see if he would willing or not. But, mm. you know, anyways, he will mm. have his way from uh, from uh, orthodox jewish or jewish orthodox perspective that close yeah. to notary carta yes yes yeah i would like to discuss with him uh, about my concerns in that matter because yeah. you know i invited notary carta to come and join the vigil at the jewish community campus when i was demonstrating every week there for the first six seven months but they didn't come mm -hmm. they didn't come to present themselves before the jewish community well, they may be afraid, but nonetheless, you know, they didn't uh, consider the matter, you know, seriously. And and that's, you know, what uh, I want to uh, hold them to account for and uh, try to convince them to Carta. Rabbi Feldman, uh, Rabbi Weiss, you know, who I know since, you know, decades, um, they've got, you know, a lot on their on their agenda already, you know, but I would like to add, you know, like, a whole other area of work uh, to Natura Carta to go into the Jewish community and not, yeah. them, not let themselves, you know, be uh, slandered and uh, ostracized. As is I wanna, the case presently. I want to change yes. the subject a little bit within the, upshell, you know, the issue of Palestine. I would like to ask Steve, what is being said about Kamala Harris? Uh, uh, support to the Zionist state and being a Zionist. Uh, during her, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, with with uh, last Monday was it Tuesday debate yes, yeah. debate I heard uh, debate on Tuesday. Yeah, okay. could you could, yeah could you put some uh, shed some light on it? I certainly can. Um, yes, sir. Uh, let's let's talk about who we're referring to. If you're referring to the Americans who towed a line and who support the Democratic Party, no matter what, nothing's being said. Just like you mentioned the Israelis who support the war, right? Nothing's being said. Nothing. They don't care. They don't care. 
they'll vote for her, and they think what Biden is okay. When it comes to when it comes to foreign policy, and general Americans are pretty stupid. They they go along with the program. So, uh, among the activists around the Palestinian movement, that that no, that's that's a different conversation. But among the American population, if she's for Israel, that's fine. If she's, if she's against Palestine, that's fine. We're we're gonna vote for her because we don't want Trump. That's how mm -hmm. people see it. There's no real debate around among the average tax paying, job holding American citizen regarding Kamala Harris and Palestine. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about those who are concerned about the issue, if you're talking about those who are demonstrating, about those who will write a letter to Congress or to a congressman or senator about something, I would say there's a generally a split. Those who think that she should say more, like those who are not who are the non the non decided movement among mostly Arab voters in Michigan and in other states, there is a concern that Kevin Harris is towing the line of Joe Biden because she is she is his vice president. Therefore she's gonna toe the line. Um there are others, however, who are not who are concerned that she has not said anything different regarding her her possible presidency and her position on Palestinian. <clears throat> there are people who are who are not going to vote for her because of this. So I would say among the activist community and those who may not be activists, but who are concerned about the, the uh, Israeli occupation, the Israeli armed assaults, murders, um, destruction of, of Gaza and oppression on the West Bank, I would say there is a split. Those who are, <laughs> who are resigned to vote against Trump, well, we, we, we hope she says more. We hope she changes her position. I'm voting for Trump. Other wing says, well, we see what she hasn't said, and I'm not going to vote for her. Or I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. That's kind of where it is. That's how I see it right now. It's an interesting That's political conjuncture because they're, they're evenly sort of matched in the polls uh, right now. Uh, um, what about, uh, what about uh, people willing to vote uh, or consider a third uh, option like Jill Stein, Dr. Jill Stein from the Green Party, who is really 100% uh, on board supporting the Palestinian right and against the Zionist genocide in Palestine? Well, what I, do you would, I would say those are the people who are not going to vote for Harris. Those are, those are the people who are concerned enough about Harris's lack of lack <laughs> of um, <laughs> Of, uh, specificity on what she would do differently. They are, they may vote for Jill Stein. If they vote, they'll vote for Jill Stein. They are they are not going to vote for Harris. Yeah. No. Or Jill Stein or Cornell West or the PSL or some other party. Yeah. No. I in, the problem really is that the challenge we have is because the American media and the political science community. Um, relegates third parties to a position of spoiler or what difference does it make? Nobody is actually polling those people to see how many people are going to vote against, will not vote for Harris. Mm -hmm. I've seen no polls yeah, or no political yeah. I've I've seen none looking at yeah. that population. How many of them are there? They are discounted. In American politics, they are discounted as useless. Mm -hmm. They make no difference. Mm -hmm. And that's the shame of the American system. Mm -hmm. That people who don't want to vote Democrat or Republican are seen as useless. Mm -hmm. So don't even pose them. They can't even come on a debate. Mm -hmm. Their parties are banned from debates. And now with all the attacks on quote, disinformation from Russia, and we have to shut down RT, and all this other kind of stuff. Anybody who says anything against against the the um, the party line, so to speak, is just ignored. Mm -hmm. So 
if Joe Stein or Cornel West or the PSL gets any media attention, it's an accident. Mm -hmm. They don't. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, you're not even allowed to. They're not. You're not even allowed to know how many people will consider voting for them. It's not even considered worthwhile of conversation. Yeah, and, and Dr. Joe Stein I'm, I'm, mentioned I'm, I'm, that I'm she was. Frank, I'm being frank about it, yeah. but it's just the way it is in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's the media. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It. The, the only time uh, there was any sort of a news report in the corporate media of Jill Stein, as she mentioned in an interview, was when she got arrested. That was it. That's all. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, the, well, the corporate media, uh, you know, works for uh, the corporate candidates and the corporate candidates, there's two of them, Trump hmm. or uh, yeah. Harris. So the, these are the two corporate media. Uh, Jill Stein is not, she's anti-corporation, so she will not be allowed to be a representative in uh, in the media. <laughs> Very no. simple. I agree with Steve 100%. And she's oh, she she's one hundred percent anti Zionist as well. She doesn't Absolutely. just talk about sixty seven. She talks about forty eight. She talks yeah, about yeah. the Nakba. Yeah, I heard yeah. her. I've heard her. She is very good. She's a really really good revolutionary. And uh, she ha actually, I read her, uh, you know, manifesto or her uh, what she wants to do, and she's really uh, she encompasses everything. Is she a socialist as well? Yeah, she is a socialist. Ah, yeah, you know, I mean, you he can't go any any better than her. Uh, yeah. with the room yeah. of the United States, you know, uh, political arena, she yeah. is very good, very yeah. appealing to the people who have a free spirit, free uh, spirit. Yeah, and she's breaking through to the uh, younger generations. Absolutely. Unlike uh, Cornell West, is breaking through uh, to a limited extent. And he's well known, but you know, like he's not getting, you know, like any sort of, you know, lift from anybody. You know, like he's very isolated, much more isolated than Jill Stein. You know, I, but, I've, I've I've loved to have see uh, Cornell uh, and Jill working together, like uh, president and vice president. That would be wonderful. That would be mm -hmm. great. I'm sure they will break lots of grounds. I'm, I'm sure they're not going to be becoming, you know. The bosses of the White House, but they will garner a good percentage of the vote. You know, the, yeah, but the, thing, the, the, the thing that needs to happen, though, that doesn't happen. I don't know why my view can't be more propagated. After the election, what will Jill Stein and Cornell West do? This is where it all falls apart in the United States. Huh. She won't win. We know she's not going to win, but she will get a lot of people to vote for her. Yes. So what will she do with those million people after the election between that and the midterms? Right. When they figure that out, they give a movement between elections, then they'll have traction. Mm -hmm. Until they do that, it's just going to be a blip, a blip every two or four years, which is wonderful, yeah. but still a blip. And I think that's where those parties have to figure it out. Okay, the election's over with. We got midterms in two years. We got an election in four years. What are we going to do to build support and maintain those support of those people who voted for us and get them to grow four or five fold, even two fold in the next two or four years? If they had a strategy like that, they'd be more impressive. They don't. I don't know why they don't have a strategy like that. I can't yeah. figure it out. I agree with you. What yeah. you have to do the elections, yeah. you build for the next election. Exactly. So, this is hard to me. That's what you do. But they don't do that. I don't. I don't understand why. Yeah, this is a question for the student movement as well to take up. You know, the student movement should yes. be discussing long term strategy too, because the, 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 the campuses are the campuses are there for at least you have a contrast to people on the campus for four years. They're, they're, they're there. They are there. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Palestine is the issue, but they're ignoring it. Yes. yes. You know, it's going to be the deciding issue. You know, because Camila Harris, killer Camila is ignoring Palestine and is going to sink herself because she's going to lose Michigan. She's going to lose the other states where the Arab and Muslim vote is the deciding factor because according to the polls, they're even now, okay? So any sort of you know issue like this is going to become the determining factor in the outcome of the election. Mm -hmm. And even if it's even, 
That does not mean that it's even because in the American system of the electoral college, you know, Trump has an advantage there because <clears throat> the Midwest is composed majority of German Americans. And guess what Trump is? He's a German American and he's proud of his German blood. So he's got an automatic advantage there because they have a historical sort of conflict with the Anglo bourgeoisie of the United States, you know, the Yankees, the, you know, the Eastern seaboard has always been in contestation with, you know, the very large body of German Americans who comprise 26% of the population, whereas the Anglo Americans comprise 27% of the population and have traditionally been the power holders. Now there's a contestation by the German Americans and its bourgeoisie to take over America against the Anglo bourgeoisie. <laughs> this is what Trump is all about. And he can do it because he's got the electoral college of those states that are going to be supporting him. And that's going to overwhelm a Harris campaign, which is not able to deal with Palestine. You know, Palestine is a deciding factor. And I see, you know, I foresee that Trump is going to win the election. Not that I think Trump is, uh, is uh, you know, there's there's no sort of difference between Trump and, and Camilla Harris, basically. They just have different, you know, strategies, you know, for the imperial center. Trump is more concerned with China, whereas, you know, the Democratic Party is more concerned with Iran and with Hezbollah. Okay. So... Palestine is going to become the deciding factor in this American election, and Camille Harris doesn't even know it. Well, you know? I would think uh, they know it, but they think that uh, uh, they will bank on splitting the Arab Muslim vote. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it's uh, the deep state, uh, which is uh, Israel lobby. The, uh, military industrial complex, uh, the CIA, the FBI, uh, the right wing uh, think tanks believe that supporting Israel is far important than the elections of Kamala Harris as a president. Therefore, she has to toe the line. Basically, even if that means she loses the the, the race. Yeah. So basically, she's not allowed. She is not allowed by the big wigs in the Democratic Party, who is in connection with these uh, lobbies. Mm -hmm. and she's not allowed to break uh, the line mm -hmm. of saying, I will make Israel stop the war because the war, as uh, Netanyahu said so rightfully, that I, at the Congress, I am fighting the war on your behalf, which is true. He is fighting the war for the American uh, empire in the Middle mm -hmm. East because any defeat of if, or Israel is a defeat of the United States hegemony in the area. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kamara Harris cannot uh, break that this golden rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camilla Harris, uh, killer Camilla, she is doomed. Uh, yes. Now, uh, Trump is incompetent. So... <laughs> This is actually, you know, can become good news because he's too incompetent, you know, to to wisely guide, you know, the uh, the empire's interests. He's going to make, you know, many mistakes. He's a fool, basically, uneducated. He is, he's a fool, but he is for us. He's our useful idiot. Yes, I mean, he's our useful idiot because he will hasten. The, the the downfall of this imperialist uh, 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 power be, because of his stupidity and his foolish and his uh, erotic behavior that will hasten the fall of this uh, uh, the most criminal empire ever existed in human history. It's called the United States of America as a system. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the system. So I am I if if I am if I'm an American if I'm an American uh, citizen I will vote for Jill Stein that's for sure and I hope that uh, 
this fool wins. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be the downfall of the United States of America. It's faster, incredible. faster, faster than with uh, the the criminals. Paris, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Those criminals on who were yeah. velvet uh, glove by killing other people. Yeah, it, while killing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how many were killed in Iraq? How many were killed in Afghanistan? How many yes. killed in Vietnam? You know, like well, this is uh, amounts, you know, like it doesn't, uh, you know, it was never presented, you know, in that fashion. You know, they never talked about the number of, you know, third world peoples who were killed. But when you add it all up, it comes to a Nazi level. It is actually worse. It's worse. Yeah. These yeah. guys, they destroyed. It's not just murdering people. It's destroying the livelihood of tens of millions of people who die indirectly from poverty, illness, diseases, uh, trying to uh, leave their homes and uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, on ships that sinks in the Mediterranean and other uh, seas. So you're talking tens of millions more. This is the policy of the imperialist United States, mostly on the watch of the Democratic Party the freedom and and democracy mm. party. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That. Mm. Mm. Oh my! Yeah, it's still such a big problem. Yep. It's not only the 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 most powerful empire in human history; it's also the most powerful problem that we have to deal with. It's a big challenge to us. Yep. Here we are, you know, with our Zoom meeting, and we're taking on you know the biggest empire that ever existed in human history. Yes. <laughs> It's and the incredible. most dangerous one. The most dangerous one, yes. In human history. Yes. But yes. there's a way in which logic acquires power. You know, when it, you know a system is illogical, it destroys itself. We don't have to do all the work. You know, if... Oh, no, uh, eventually, eventually, United States, there's no emperor in the human history that lasts forever. It always uh, goes up plateaus then come down usually from within not from mm -hmm. the outside yeah usually like you know soviet union it was it was destroyed from within mm. same as the roman empire empire mm. same as the uh, arabic empire same as uh persian empire they were not defeated they were just decayed from within and shh, collapsed yeah and ottoman empire as well yeah. Same thing, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what this uh, American election is all about. This is a self-destructive uh, mechanism that they have built in to the uh, political censorship that they have embedded in American politics that is not allowing for a solution to be presented to the American people for their choice in a democratic election in a pass in a pass peaceful way. This option is not being made available. It's being repressed to the greatest extent possible. So without such a solution, then they will end up, you know, decaying into a civil war. That's very possible. You know, when the right-wingers, you know, could be emboldened by a victory of uh, Trump in the election, they're going to try to take it out you know, on anybody that they decide is a target. They're going to attack. If they don't win the election, they're going to attack out of revenge in order to try to reverse the, the course of the election. So one way or the other, you know, the, the right-wing fascist movement in the United States, very powerful, very well-armed, is ready and willing to fight. And we have to be prepared. Otherwise, we will be wiped out. What do you think, Steve, you know, is uh, the prospects for... Uh, the fascist movement in the United States, you know, can they get away with it or are we strong enough to be able to resist um, them? I, well, I'm asked that a lot and I, I need to give the answer people don't like. Um, I don't see the fascist movement winning anything in the United States outside of Trump's election. I don't see them going on a rampage murdering people. I, I just don't see it because people have guns too and they'll shoot back at them. Mm -hmm. Um, there may be some areas where they try vigilante justice, but I just, or maybe the the place will be the schools or the universities. 
um, they may try to go to shopping centers, but I don't see them. I just don't. I don't see him doing it. If they have Trump in power, that's enough, and he'll he'll tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. The people who I think have to worry about it are the, are are the immigrants, not the broad mass of Americans. The immigrants will are the target that Trump has set, mm -hmm. and by immigrants, I I even mean legal immigrants. Mm -hmm. If you're not of black, white, native background if you can be targeted in a certain city you not in michigan we're not, we're not talking about areas where the population large populations in small in areas where the migrant community the migrant community is small or even the legal the legally the legal migrant community is small then there may be some vigilantes coming out to try and burn your house at night but i don't i don't see it happen i just don't know why i don't see it happening in a large way. I just, I, I don't know why. It would just seem so over the top. And it would be, resist, there would be opposition to it. I don't see people just going to sit there, oh, this bird, oh, I don't see people sitting there, oh, they killed, they, they killed 100 Mexicans today. Okay, oh, you know, that's, that's nice. No. I do see Trump trying to deport people. He said he would do that. I do mm -hmm. think that would happen. But as far as the mob violence, um, you know, maybe, but I keep saying I don't see it. But because I don't see it doesn't mean it won't happen because I I might be blind to something and not see it. So I always say time will tell. And, I, and, and that's a terrible thing to say. But I see, still say time will tell. I just don't, I don't see it occurring except with with expulsions via the, um, the immigration system. I do see that occurring. Mm -hmm. But that's just how that's one of Trump's things. Mm -hmm. you know, to blame everything on, on the migrants to, to spread racism among in, in, anybody who is migrating here who he wants to target. Mostly Mexicans, mostly people from Latin America. Yeah. Most most of them are not 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 the Russians, not not uh or people from Ukraine, not the even people from Africa. He kinda it's mostly the Mexicans. People from Mexico, Latin America, his hatred is towards them. Mm -hmm. So I think they, if if they're, if they're targets, and the problem with that is they have guns too. Mm -hmm. but they aren't unarmed. They're, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they 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 don't have to organize and defend themselves. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So I think the vigilantes will have the vigilantes will, will, will have will have some problems in some parts. Other parts where people are dispersed, small numbers. If vigilantes were to come and do mass murders. You know, I think that's possible, but I don't mm -hmm. see the, the Latinos being sitting back, okay, you know, come and kill me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. just, just because, you know, they're, they have more use, they have more use in guns than Americans do. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. Perhaps I'm being uh, more pessimistic, pessimistic about the United States, <clears throat> but uh, it could, uh, the migrants, you know, who number 11 million illegal so-called migrants. Mm -hmm. so -called. They will resist. If they're going to be yes, expelled, no. they will resist. Okay, they'll and resist. that could start... It, that it could, could... Yes. See, remember, yes. remember, many of them come from, many of them come from countries where, where, where they're either narco-traffickers or where they actually had armed rebellions against the government, armed rebellions, be yes. it in, be in Colombia, be it in El Salvador, be it in El, you know these parts of, of, of Latin America, South America, they mm -hmm. have, they they, they, they haven't they haven't just sat around and twiddling their thumbs. Oh well, you know, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. so I think Trump is making a mistake, pick targeting them because mm -hmm. they aren't they aren't, they aren't just acquiescently going to allow themselves to be wiped out. They'll leave before they they will leave and go home before they do that. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll take off. No, no, I, I don't see them sitting back and, and allow that happen. Then again, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. I think my pessimism of, of the prospect of a civil war in the United States is is uh, based upon the uh, the resistance that is going to be offered by the migrants, which will set off uh, okay. set off um, uh, the conflicts. You know, which will develop. You know, and and grow into a civil war unless. You know, there's a counter, you know, unless there are concessions being made, you know, but Trump is not going to be making any concessions to the migrants, you know, 
So, you know, I, I see it degenerating into a general sort of, you know, civil war. But perhaps, you know, I'm being influenced more by the prospect I see of a civil war breaking out in Palestine between the Zionists themselves. Because, you know, they're the, the, the fascists, you know, have the upper hand at the moment. And they have the upper hand in terms of public support as well at the moment. So uh, they can actually take the initiative and attack the uh, Democrats and, and leftists, as they uh, mentioned, and they they can believe that they can get away with it, you know, because the government is not going to be coming down on them. So they think that they can get away with, you know, like getting rid of the opposition, which they cannot, you know, like cope with. So that's well, where my pessimism comes, you know, from, because I see that I, it's I, uh, happening in, 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 uh, in Palestine, and I can see it happening in the United States as well. Now, among the anti-pro-Zionist forces, they will go on the attack whenever they're ready. That's the problem we do have. Our demonstrations are not safe. Yeah, We've seen the Zionist mobs can come and right now beat up people. They haven't even murdered anybody, but don't, don't, don't put that past them. Mm -hmm. So that's a movement that has shown itself to be protected by the police by the FBI, by the by, by the deep state. They do what they want. They are violent. They have connections. I, I think them, they are somebody to keep an eye on because they are shown they, they can do whatever they want and basically get away with it. Nothing is done to defend demonstrators for Palestine. Nothing. We are we are open targets and unless unless we come out in the tens of thousands or hundreds, we can be targeted at, at any at at any demonstration. Yeah, we have to be prepared. Anything, we have to take that in account. Anything, yeah. anything can happen to us. Right yeah. now, there have been no murders. But that doesn't mean that murders can occur. No. We have to have our own security at all events. We cannot well, rely and, upon and, the police. And, the, the, and, and whenever you say that, oh, we can't have security. Oh, we, they're like, I don't say, what's, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> you're, you're being beaten up. You're being targeted by groups. And you and you think the police are going to protect you? Oh, oh it's, it's really amazing how what kind of response you got. I I I share what you said to me weeks ago to people who are in, in, in around the administration. Oh, I'm not sure we could do that. <laughs> not sure we can do that. Well, I'm not, people say it. I'm not sure we could do. That. Okay, then guess just get beat up some more then with bear spray. And, you know, yeah, come on, yeah. come on. In, in England, you know, when the fascists were riding after the election of the Labour government, yeah. you know, they didn't rely upon the police. The police weren't doing anything. They were just standing there, you know, like watching the uh, the fascist, you know, rioters, you know, just watching them. They didn't sort of try to stop them at all. So, uh -huh. but uh, what the, was the deciding factor that stopped the riots from happening is that the anti-racists immobilized and they it were sure much did. greater in number than the fascists were. And so the police, you know, all they could do, you know, like was stand in between them, you know, they couldn't stop the uh, anti-racists. Right. And uh, and so, you know, that uh, demoralized the, the racists to the point where they don't, they're not demonstrating anymore. So they've been pushed back. That was the that's success. Exactly what yeah, and that's, and that's what, what we have to do. That's what we have to do, right, right. Yeah. right. Did you hear, Steve, about uh, the third person who self-immolated Immolated themselves. I, I, you know what? I, I heard about it in passing. I saw the newspaper. I saw the article last night, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't. Have, they don't. They're not giving us very much information about it either. They're trying to just I, I, forget I it. To, I, yeah. I have to check it out and see what the brother was talking about. Because yeah. I'm, I, I saw it last night. I was looking on the internet, and I saw it, but. I was preparing for the story for our program tonight, so I need to go back and check it out in, in more detail. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, that uh, that clarifies things uh, in various uh, domains. And uh, I, I want to express my appreciation for your for your presence here and your contribution, Steve, as a brother and comrade. I, I think that we are, are doing... Uh, the cutting edge, you know, work that needs to be done here in order to develop a real movement that will uh, defend us and uh, bring about uh, the revolutionary change that is necessary, essential. Well, 
you know, I, I, I appreciate it. And we have work to do. It's good, like I said, it's good to see people having a conference today on Palestine. That's great. People are meeting. That's great. So people are moving ahead. Within the election, I think we do have some, um, I'm not going to say a retardation. No, that, 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 doesn't, that, that doesn't express what I'm trying to say. I do think there is some confusion over what to do with the Kamala Harris versus Trump um, the, um, uh, choice and how will Jill Stein and Cornell West and the PSL play in that contest. I think that's still, that's not really clear. That's still kind of like a popcorn machine shaking up and not knowing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But Palestine, I think it's clear. You're either for Palestine or you're against Palestine. Mm -hmm. With right now, there are not many people who are, who are on, on, on the side. People saying they're on the side, but really they're not. They're either for Israel and, uh, and the oppression of Palestine or the for Palestinians and the right to freedom. That's kind of, it's almost been cut down the middle, I think. That's very mm -hmm. clear. Which is because of the attacks on the encampments and because of what what, 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 what Israel does. Mm -hmm. It just murders people. Mm -hmm. It just takes their land. It destroys their houses. It jails them and sexually assaults them. It's nothing that they won't do. And some people are just say, "Damn, that's kind of fucked up." So you're like, "Excuse me, like, that's kind of fucked up." I don't, you know, I'm, I, 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 I don't know much about Palestine, but what they're doing to those people is not right. A lot of people would just say it like that. That's what they'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, to uh, a message to our viewers is that we we need to get shared. You know, like we're doing the cutting edge work here. And we we need to ask you know for your help to make sure that uh, our voices you know get get out there because uh, nobody else is going to do it you know for us you know it's got to be you right. yeah share like have conversations have discussions with your friends and allies we need you to step up become part of the movement in 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 your city town or state if say you're in prison you can't build, be part of the movement on the on the streets. Do you can inside the prisons to talk to talk to other prisoners? Yeah. We need your support. We need yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Until next week, then. This is here Thank now. You. And uh, this is uh I didn't identify myself. I'm Dr. Abraham Ibrahim Weisfeld. And uh I've been uh, here for Palestine since becoming an activist in 1968. And I think that this time, the Intifada that has been launched by the Palestinians in resistance is not going to be defeated like it has been so easily in the past when a thousand no. militants were killed off and then the Intifada, you know, was ended for that generation. No, this time, I think we have something else happening here. We have an international Intifada and we are part of it. And we have to continue with this because this is the the crucial struggle of our time and in this election in particular. Right. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. See you next week. <laughs>